Hey everybody, it's Pastor Dan with another word from Romans chapter 8. And what a beautiful word we have today in verse 18. Um, this is a famous passage that is built on what Paul has been talking about in the recent past. So the last couple of days, he has been just really riffing on this idea of status with God. We're, we are sons of God. We are children of God. We are heirs of God. And we're even co-heirs with Christ. So we have this amazing, uh, amazing status with God, this amazing favored position with the Almighty God. Why? Because of the Spirit's work. So the Spirit's work in our life, bringing us to faith, bringing us to that saving trust in Jesus Christ as our Savior from sin, that has given us this status. And now, on the basis of that, he says, I consider that my present sufferings are not worth comparing to the glory that will be revealed in us. That's Romans 8, 18. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing to the glory that will be revealed in us. Now let's take a pretty careful look at a number of the words that Paul was inspired to choose in this very important passage. First of all, he says, I consider. Now, that you, you can tell that's a verb that has to do with thinking. Um, it's, it's almost, it, it's like a math word. So what, what Paul is saying is like, we do the math on this, but it's not some kind of a cold calculation, right? It's not like that at all, but it is when you use sort of the calculator of your faith, when you, when you count things up, when you consider things on the basis of your faith in Jesus, rather than what your eyes can see, then you're going to come to a certain conclusion. I, and, and this is the conclusion that he comes to. You know, this, this uh, Paul who in uh, 2 Corinthians 5 said, we live by faith, not by sight. So when you live that way, you got, you're able to do the math on the way things are, especially your sufferings. Now, the word for suffering in this passage, um, certainly for uh, first century Christians in the Roman Empire in the city of Rome, I think it probably would have had more of a physical tinge to it. Uh, that is to say, the suffering that they did for the cause of Christ was often physical. Like if you, if you say no to emperor worship in the first century, there's going to be some physical suffering. Today, when you say no to the world, when you say no to worshiping the things of this world, there's suffering as well. Um, it might not be quite as physical, but it is just as drastic in terms of emotional, um, psychological. You know, when somebody was that you thought was a dear, dear friend, or partner simply leaves you because you will not bow down to worship them in one way or another, that's suffering. Um, if you are made fun of because you hold the Lord God in highest esteem, well, that being made fun of is hurtful. It, it, it is suffering. 
And Paul says those sufferings are present. And the Greek phrase there is literally the now time. And I don't know if you remember this, but there's two words for time in the Greek. This is the word for time that has to do with like the just the right time, an appropriate time, a time with a beginning and an end, not endless time. And so this is a way for Paul to say that as hard as they are, these present sufferings that we're in for the cause of Christ, they are limited in nature. They only exist for a certain season. They will not last forever and ever into eternity. So that's what he's emphasizing with the, the present sufferings. And he says, what I've come, I've come to the conclusion, my faith has done the math on this. And as I weigh my present sufferings, I notice that something else weighs a lot more. And you know what that is? Future glory. So future glory, like in one of those old-fashioned um, balancing scales, future glory just tips the scale in our, in our favor. And I'm, and I'm talking about tipping the scale because that's the word for worth comparing in the Greek. It's the Greek word axios, which really means equal or balanced. And, and what Paul is saying is there's just, there's no comparison. There's no, there's no question. There is no equality in this matter. Are, are the sufferings that we have for the cause of Christ in this life, is that a lot? Yes. But you know what's a lot more? Future glory. The glory that will be revealed. And think about that, that, just that expression. That means the eternal glory that we have in heaven is pre it, it's, it's there. It's there. It's just that it's not apparent yet. So this is why we need to consider this. We need to think about this. We need to um, um, put on the, the glasses of faith. And when we see by faith, we realize um, how much more glory with God in heaven outweighs anything that we suffer for the cause of Christ on earth. So what I'm taking away from this a uh, terribly comforting passage is especially in times of Christian cross, especially when you are suffering because you are a Christian, do the math. And, and do the math with your faith, trusting that there are blessings that you can't see right now that are way more than the sufferings that you are experiencing. You know, I've often said that um, unhappy people are poor mathematicians because they, they, they do a lousy job of counting their blessings. If you're, if you're unhappy about everything in life, it means you're kind of closing your eyes to all of the blessings you have in life. What Paul says to us today is, oh, that's true. But did you know there's even more blessing in what we can't see, but is real and it's there. It's just not apparent yet. And that is our heavenly home. Let's pray about that. Oh Lord God, we praise you for sending the Holy Spirit to give us this glorious status as your children. Help us to use the eyes of faith to size up everything that's happening in our life 
And when we are troubled with sufferings because we are defending you in this life, help us to remember that they don't amount to anything compared to the glory that you will reveal in us. Oh, we are recipients of your grace to have such glory coming our way. Help us to realize it right now. In Jesus' name, amen. God be with you, everybody. We'll see you again next time.